Does anxiety make you feel guilty when you try to relax? You're not alone. We're going to talk all about it. Stay tuned. That's what's up next. Hi, my name is Natasha Daniels. I'm a therapist and I make videos for people with anxiety or OCD. Today I want to talk to you about that nagging voice that some of us have with anxiety that says, did you do that? Aren't you supposed to be doing this? Don't you have that thing due next week? Don't you have that thing due tomorrow? Don't you have that thing due in three weeks? <laughs> right? Shouldn't you be doing something productive? Are you just sitting there lazy like a slob watching TV or relaxing? Don't you want to do something that has purpose? You need to get up. Go do something. Is that you? Do you experience that? That can be really exhausting and it's very common with anxiety. Now the flip side, and I already made a video on this, is um, the complete opposite of this. That's the procrastinator and it really is anxiety based as well. So anxiety can show up as procrastination. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to avoid. I'm going to kick the can down the road or I'm going to do, 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 do so I can feel some relief, but there's always something to do. So I did make a video on procrastination. You can find it here. And I did say in that video that I was going to make one on the doers, how to help the doers. So if you're not a doer and you're like, I wish I had that problem, you really don't because it is exhausting and it comes with its own set of issues. But if you're a procrastinator, go check out that video as well. So what to do with the doers? Um, I am in this category, so I totally get it. The problem is if we don't slow down and if we don't have some self-compassion and treat ourselves in the way that we would treat a friend, we're really going to burn out. And so we can't maintain this long term. It can impact us with our health, our sleep, our overall happiness or contentment. If we're constantly doing, 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 we're not really experiencing, experiencing, experiencing. We're not soaking in things and really enjoying them because we are constantly checking things off. So how do you slow down? How do you relax? It is actually really hard and tricky and it will feel very unnatural when you hit the brake and you try to create some new habits. I'm going to tell you how to do that. So if you are a to-do list person, which I am, <laughs> I love my to-do lists. They're not, you know, OCD to-do lists, you know, where I'm very compulsive. They're anxiety to-do lists. And the difference is, they make me feel much better um, and compulsions don't make you feel better. So I love lists. I don't compulsively make lists, but I have my to-do list and I write down what things need to be done so I don't forget them. And also I like it visually and I like checking them off. That makes me feel good. Can you relate to that? But sometimes, and I'm totally guilty of this, I would put too many things on my to-do list. And so I would put unreasonable amount of stuff on my to-do list and it wouldn't be broken out in days it was just one general to-do list. Natasha, you need to do this and this and this and follow up on this and this and this. So when I would look at it, I'd feel exhausted and I would spend my days, you know, rapidly trying to get those things off my list, adding things to the list, and I never got to the bottom. So I always went to bed feeling incomplete. Can you relate to that? So what I started to do is I broke it down. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, whole week. And I would only put things on there that were reasonable. And so I would look at my to-do list for a Monday and if it looked like it was too much, I'd say, that's a lot. I'm not gonna be able to do that in a 12 hour period because we don't have 24 hours. We shouldn't, we have 12, we shouldn't even have that much. And so I'm gonna take some of this off. And so I would move it around. I'd say, wow, Wednesday doesn't look that busy. I'm gonna move that to Wednesday. And so every day on my to-do list, I only had a few things to do. And that made me feel better. I also didn't put the things on my to-do list that are my daily routine. I didn't put feed the kids or go pick up the kids from school or make a YouTube video, even though this is something that is something I have to do because it's part of my routine. So I only added things on my to-do list that are unusual. Make that phone call to that place to follow up on what the problem is with that. I would add things that were um, above and beyond what I normally have to do. Oh, I have to do that work assignment or I have to do this. Add what you have to do that's not in your routine so that the to-do list doesn't look as overwhelming. And here's the trick. Then you have to stop. So this was my problem. I would get to the end of my to-do list on the Monday and I would say, I'm still doing good. I have more energy. What's next? 
Let me tackle Tuesday. So Tuesday doesn't seem too overwhelming. That defeats the purpose, right? Relaxing and taking care of yourself and finding enjoyment is equally, if not more important than doing your work. Everything's a balance. And if you're not balanced, even in a good way, right? You're doing all your work, you're on top of things, you're being productive, but you're not slowing down. That is just as bad. So if you have to schedule in or write on your to-do list, I'm going to watch Netflix, or I'm gonna take a, a break and go for a walk, or I'm gonna do whatever is relaxing for you, write it on your to-do to list if you have to. Now I would say, it depends on your life and your schedule, it is good to have an off time. And it depends. If you're a student, you may not have the traditional time where you end your night. Um, if you're someone else who is done, you're done with your day and it's five o'clock and you're done, it is good to have a definitive time where you say, I am clocking out, I'm not doing any more on my to-do list, I'm relaxing. That will look different for each one of you. For me, once I go and pick my kids up and I'm back around four, I'm clocked out. I am no longer doing any work unless there's an emergency that pops up, but I'm very aware of it. That is my time to do other things. Ironically, that is my time to maybe do laundry or clean up and listen to an audiobook that I'm enjoying. It's my time to relax. And at night after dinner, I always force myself, and I know that sounds so bizarre, but you could probably relate to this if you're listening to this video. I force myself to watch at least one show. In the beginning, that felt very uncomfortable. I was not used to it. I was used to getting back and working all the way up until like midnight um, and then going to bed and starting all over. I forced myself to watch one show every day. Training your brain to relax is just as important as training your brain to do. Relaxing and doing need to be balanced. And when we don't balance, we lose perspective in life and we don't, we don't wind up enjoying um, what we're experiencing because we're on this hamster wheel and we don't get off. Some of the other things that I would suggest is possibly make a list of the things that you enjoy doing. What do you do for yourself that is complete relaxation? And see it as a task, see it as a goal. When I see it as a goal, that really helped me because I'm very goal oriented. So when I made it a goal to treat myself well and to take time to pause and take time for self-care and self-compassion, I wanted to succeed at that goal and it became a task, which was helpful because I'm task oriented and so I wanted to succeed at this. And so I made a list and I found that my list was really, really tiny. So what would you write? I had to actually figure it out. I had to create new things to take care of myself because it had been so long where I have not allowed myself to relax. I had nothing to, to really do. I had no shows that I watched anymore. I had no hobbies. I had nothing. I just had creating online content, which I know is really, really sad and pathetic. <laughs> so what is your thing? Make a list and say, these are the things that I just love to do. Pure relaxation, no purpose in it, no goal, pure relaxation and pure bliss and enjoyment. Write them down, pin them up if you have to, pick one each day. So make a new rule in your house. What are the things that you have to do each day that relate to relaxing? And then when anxiety pops up, which it will and say, oh my gosh, you're so lazy. You say, hey, this is on my list and I've scheduled from seven to 9 p.m. or whatever it is for you that I'm supposed to watch a show. And so I'm allowed to do this because it's actually scheduled into my day. When it's scheduled into your day, I know that sounds completely weird. Anxiety will quiet down a little bit and you will be able to really sit in that relaxation. It will feel uncomfortable at first, but sit with the discomfort like we do with everything else when we're facing our fears. And over time, you're gonna to start to crave it and really enjoy it. So I hope that you find the sparkle in everything you do, and I hope you relax. And I'll talk to you again next Thursday. Take care.